Uh, I just noticed one problem. I see a calf looking for mom. So what happened the next day was not exactly what I wanted. Didn't expect when I pulled up to see Eleanor um, what we found. Somebody come up here to really kind of just tick you off or what? Big Joe, what are you doing, buddy? It's not a good sign. Dunbar, what are you doing? Oh, jeez. This is what I get to drive up to. Him and him. So I just pulled up to the Ponderosa and when this guy is up here right now, it's not a good sign. Because the other guy on the other side is right there. That means we have a fence down. Oh, did you hear that? Somewhere. Problem? We gotta figure it out. Welcome to Bison Ranching. I wanna thank Hydrabed for sponsoring today's video. We gotta get all this mess taken care of right now between Dunbar and Big Joe. Get them separated. Try to figure out where this gap is in the fence. And they're also gonna take you to see and give you an update on Eleanor and her calf. Well, there you go, guys. An image you may not see for very long. Dunbar, Big Joe, right here in the center of the ranch. Good morning, Dunbar. Has somebody come up here to really kind of just tick you off or what? I know, buddy. What do you think? Giving the side evil eye. Has somebody may have tore a fence down. Is it your fault? This doesn't literally look like it'd keep you in that well. Oh dear. Things are going well this morning, guys. Oh boy. Tails up, everything. Blowing. Oh, both looking really pretty this time of the year. Ah. You know, this is a, it's a lovely day. It's so beautiful outside. It's so pretty. I really like days like this. But um, I noticed it on the camera this morning. I said, hmm, the Big Joe herd is uh, up in the front. And I got the notification that uh, there was some movement going on at the front of the Ponderosa. And I checked it. And guess who was up here? Big Joe and Dunbar. The boys are back together again. Not physically sort of back together there's big joe there's dunbar we've got some issues which means there's a fence down somewhere and uh do you remember about two weeks ago we just tore down a fence in like a day and then we quickly hired out and got it done we built a 700 foot of barbed wire fence five strands got that done pretty fast so we could because we're getting ready to work our bison well the bison kind of forced us to do that, and uh, now we're back to that again, but this is a different fence uh, now. So now, we're gonna take the ATV down and see what's going on. We're gonna rotate them into our cover crop pasture. One, didn't wanna do it yet, but they're hungry for grass. That's what I gotta do. I'm gonna grab some feed real quick. Hello, gorgeous. I uh, just noticed one problem. I see a calf that's on the good side of the fence looking for mom. It's trapped out, so got one down there going back and forth. So, guys, if I've never told you before, Ponderosa Barn, pasture one's right here. The new fence is stretched right there. I see a calf running that fence, the new one that we just did. He's way down there trying to get in. But I think that I'm guarantee you the fence is torn down somewhere in here. This is pasture two, first cover crop. This is just a trap, pasture one, two, and then three is in the very far back.
All right, so this is the gate in the pasture one here. They've got out in pasture two. I see the fence. Here comes mama right here. There's the calf that's stressing out. So what'll happen is these calves away from their mom, obviously this is like way too early to be weaning. So I've got to let this gate open. We'll drive away. When we drive off, he'll see the opening. Looks like some of the moms coming after him. Right over there, there's a mama coming after him. When we drive, he's just running the fence and hopefully he'll see it and come in here. We're gonna leave this open for them because I don't mind them rotating in here for for just a little bit since they're chasing green grass. I have me chain. I'm gonna make a quick note here. It's always important to chain your gates back. I get lazy sometimes and I don't do it, but I'm gonna say it right now. It's always important, especially with bulls. If this is loose, they'll just hit it and bang it around. I'm just it's better to always chain it back. Plus, if it gets loose or whatever and it shuts, you may have some locked out and some locked in. So anyways, there's one of the new babies, by the way. Hey, little Quapa, looky here. Look who you got with you. The geese are chatty this morning. Looky there. She wants to get back out. And she's like, this is too stressful. <laughs> Doing good. Now they're all kind of migrating this way. They want to go over here. So this pasture's had a lot of rest. All right. I'm going to drive this fence real quick and see, uh, see what's torn up. Yeah. I had a feeling this would be it. Right here. It's not much, but... I'll show you guys. It doesn't take much for a whole herd to get out, uh, basically. So, right here, looks like uh, you can see this fence has been patched up before. Look at that. <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? But, looks like uh, this This is just a cross fence, obviously. The get-by fence, you can see it's not in great shape. Then There's a new fence here and a new fence there. So far, no issues. But, um this is one of those ones I was a little worried about. And um, this kind of forces our hand. Not super stressed out about it. It's okay. As um, long as the bison are safe and we're all, the boys are separated. That's the main part. On situations like this, they're still at the Ponderosa. They're still on our land, which is <laughs> number one. That is number one. Two, they're safe. Uh, three, the boys are not together. That's important. The boys are not together, but you see some of these issues that we've had with Dunbar and Big Joe. Some of the herds making their way back up here. There's a little baby right there. So they're kind of moving between two and three right now, but we've obviously got to work on this fence now. So this is probably only 50 yards maybe, which is not bad, but I had a feeling this was, this was the spot. So there it is. Two top wires gone, two top strands, and uh, the whole herd can get out. The problem, what we're, what we're facing right now is I've been still feeding them hay because this grass, it's not very punchy. It's, there's not a lot to it, basically runs through them, and I mean runs through them. So we still give them roughage, still give them the hay. They want this right here. So uh, as soon as we work these bison, all of them, wherever they all are. <laughs> as soon as we work them, they're going to the burn unit. It's been resting for since last July. No kidding, since last July. All right, now we know, time to repair a fence. Or let's build a new one. A lot of growth. Hey, Big Joe. 
its tail up at me. I don't need your sass. I don't need it right now. I just want to get in here. Well, since I have a pen built up here, so this is where Dunbar and Big Joe have been talking. Went ahead and fed him some cubes here, get him sidetracked. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this gate. So I'm gonna let the Big Joe herd rotate and get some, get some fresh cover crop grass for the day. I'm gonna lock this up, keep them in here. Come on! Let's go! Woo! Got some fresh ground for you. Come on! Let's go! Woo! Good girl. Good girl. All right, so they're listening this morning. Well, they are at least. Boys, not so much, but this is why we let them in here. So one of my buddies, he raises cattle. He asked me if he could use my creek gate. And I said, sure, man. I needed to get out of the pasture anyways. A couple months ago, Marissa and I brought this creep gate down here to catch the calves in pasture too. We were unsuccessful and I actually used it down here to block off the bison from jumping some fencing before the fence came down. But this creeper gate, it actually works, but we had a hard time catching them in pasture too because it was so large. But now it's time to get it out of here. Got it loaded up with the hydro bed arm beds getting it done i've had the hydro bed for about four or five months now and i am learning how to do a lot of things with it for example right here An easy way to use this just have a couple of chains I always have a chain with me anyways you could wrap anything around this a lot of people think well it's so green out here take a look at that you think that oh it's time to stop putting out hay well a lot of this early spring stuff that comes up doesn't have it's pretty wet. It can literally like run through these animals. So we're still rolling out hay, especially to the calves that I have caught up here at the barn. We've been doing that. And what I can do with the hydro bed is I can, a lot of times I'll roll out a bale of hay. I've been doing that to the big herd um, as we are about to actually stop putting out hay. What I've been doing with the big herd is I, I put out my last bale of hay basically with the big herd. I like to roll it out and places where we've getting, been getting a lot of rain uh, is a washout like on roads and stuff that have ruts so I like to roll it out there in some cases we still have to put out hay to the calves or the Dunbar group that's up here at the barn because we're getting ready to work them we can do that with the arms here from hydro bed I like to roll it out and whatever little pieces I have left I can haul 
from the pasture all the way up here to the front. I can give to the horses um, now that we have uh, two. Or I can give a full bill to Dunbar as well. As an update on Eleanor, guys, it just got worse. Not good. So what happened the next day was not exactly what I wanted uh, to happen. Didn't expect when I pulled up to see Eleanor um, what we found. Well, the morning that we found Eleanor and her lost calf, uh, that evening... Uh, Marissa and Brooks and I went and did an evening herd check to make sure Eleanor was doing okay and check uh, that her baby was still there and that we didn't have any other new red dogs. When we got to the calf, Eleanor was a little bit away from it because there were two other cows up next to it checking the little heifer calf out. I'm actually licking on it and smelling of it, which I think is unique uh, behavior from these animals. And something I didn't mention in my previous video is whenever I got up to the calf and I had kind of Brooks distracted, uh, I just really inspected the calf. I flipped it over. I really just looked at its entire body, checked its mouth and just really looked it over. The cow that was there was the Texas 11 cow and she didn't, she just let me do it, um, from a close distance. But I wanted to make sure that nothing as far as on the outside caused the death of this calf well the next morning i went out uh to check eleanor again and just do our normal herd check to see if we had any new babies and again we ran into another situation not uh, not a good morning when i arrived the next morning i couldn't find the calf it was a bad start to the day eleanor was in the same area and uh, the first thing I did, instead of actually driving out there, I flew the drum. I searched and I searched for that calf. Um, because the red dogs, when they're born, uh, they're super cinnamon red color. And uh, they're easy to spot, typically. And so a good way for me to check is I was just going to send the drone out there first. And so I did, and I really I couldn't find the calf at all. And so that's when I drove out there to get on foot to see if I could find anything. So I think we found a trail here. This is where Eleanor had been hanging out. And she had the calf like right in here somewhere. Left the calf with her. She's trying to do the right thing. I usually give them a day to mourn. And I'm pretty sure she had it late Friday night, early Saturday morning. So I was going to let her keep it till Sunday morning. I was going to come back and bury them like I always do and uh, notice right along here all the grass is up except this spot it's laid down right here no issues with grass and then right here it's kind of like a you can see all the grass is laid down it's laid down laid down and then Jackie followed it kind of out and so I'm assuming coyotes came from there back in here got close enough got the calf and uh from there so unfortunately this just stinks so eleanor's been pacing back and forth around here all day looking for a baby it's uh, very very sad Definitely a sad case of with Eleanor. Um, you know, I tried to do the right thing with her. I always let, like the three females that uh, lost calves last year, I I let them mourn. I didn't lose any of those calves uh, for predation last year. This thing has just gotten worse, basically, and it's sad because it's Eleanor, and I feel bad for her. She's such a sweet cow, innocent. Didn't deserve that, basically. And uh, I don't know what happened. 
uh, or how she lost the calf. I know that whenever we left her, she was there all by herself hanging out with that calf. And uh, I left her alone, let her mourn like, I, like she should. She deserves that. And um, unfortunately, something took it. And that's, that's the super sad part. And I'm upset about it. I can be upset at myself, but I tried to do the right thing. Dunbar's right over there. I'll let these calves run around out here in our little trap uh, before we work them and let them eat some of this grass down and eat some leftover hay up here. But I'm kind of, uh, it's one of those things that you, you dang if you do, you dang if you don't sort of a deal. And uh, then something happens to the calf. Pretty sure it was a coyote because the, my neighbor right there has got woods to the south. Those woods way down there. I say way down there. They're not very far from us, but that's where I've heard the coyotes a lot and I've heard Jackie bark at and go. So I'm assuming that's what happened with that trail and the grass beat down. And I'm just sad because I planned on burying it. I buried, I don't know, two of them right over there before under the under the uh, native pecan trees that we have. So sad deal, but anyways, we'll get our girl taken care of. Of course, she'll get her special cubes and attention like she always does. So I'm learning so much with the Hydra bed. I love it. I honestly don't know how I've gone this long without using or not having the Hydra bed. I love it so much, guys. If you're interested in a flat bed, you might want to look at Hydra bed. One of the great things about it, it is a tough, tough piece of equipment. If it can handle these guys right here, it's tough, I promise you. And it's so versatile, I'm able to do so many things with it, and I still got some things on my mind I'm gonna use it for. And it just comes in handy, because it's your vehicle. You don't have to have a tractor. It's out there with you. You might as well use those arm beds. So www.hydrobeds.com, or give them a call right here on this number. Link in the description. Guys, tell them I called you. If you're reaching out to Hydrobed, you tell them. I talked about Hydrobed, and I showed you some cool stuff in our video today that it can do, and lots of the stuff that we've done with it already. You tell them Dusty from Cross Timbers Bison sent you. Thank you guys for watching us today. Tell Dunbar hi. We'll take good care of our girl Eleanor. Thank you guys for watching us. We'll see you soon. Keep on Boston ranching.